King Arthur, The Legend of the Sword's disastrous opening in May 2017 vaulted it to the top of the list of the biggest box office bombs of the year, earning a measly $14.7 million in the US against a $175 million budget, plus marketing costs. So what happens now? You know what happens now. You're quickly becoming a legend. Yeah, a legendary flop. But director Guy Ritchie knows how to make big, loud, awesome action movies. Charlie Hunnam is a talented actor on the rise with all the qualities you could want in a leading man. Jude Law makes a great villain. So by Merlin's beard, how did The Legend of the Sword go so wrong? Out of touch. The Legend of the Sword is the latest in a string of studios trying and failing to put a fresh spin on old stories and properties, joining Ben-Hur, Chips, and The Legend of Tarzan in the Flophouse. Recycling familiar tales just isn't as profitable as it once was, unless you're Marvel, DC, or Disney. But it wasn't that long ago that Arthurian legend was a cinematic goldmine. Just ask the makers of 1981's Excalibur, which grossed $35 million against an estimated $11 million budget. Alas, the times have changed. Hollywood's last attempt at bringing the legend to the big screen, 2004's star-packed King Arthur, was also a widely panned flop, suggesting modern audiences just no longer have an appetite for Arthur. Behold, the man who pulled sword from stone. And if you actually were pumped for another Knights of the Roundtable flick, the multiple delays pushing back the release date by a whopping 10 months might have killed your buzz. TV killed the cinema star. When it comes to stabbing and shouting, we're spoiled for choice. Do we really need yet another big screen King Arthur movie when we've got Game of Thrones and Vikings on demand? Television is the new home of the adventure epic with hundreds and hundreds of hours available of the exact same kind of gritty and bloody entertainment The Legend of the Sword is offering up. Fans of swords and sorcery stories won't head out to the theater for this kind of thing unless they really feel like they can count on solid results. And the years of recasting rumors, with Idris Elba and Colin Farrell among many others, attached to and then dropped from the project, did not bode well for the movie's final cut. Thin Gruel the almost entirely male supporting cast in The Legend of the Sword aren't really fleshed out characters like the ones fans love in HBO's epics, they're more like plot devices. King Arthur's cast does their best with what they've been given, but their thinly written characters have no real motivation outside of find Arthur, get him to wield Excalibur, and make him tell us what to do. Now, when you say we're going to take the castle, what does that mean? I thought you said you weren't going to push me. Come on, let's chop chop. Then there's the mysterious mage, the only prominent female character who only ever uses her immense power from a safe distance, secretly, and commands animals to do her dirty work. But when combat gets close, she's quickly overpowered, which just doesn't track. Why is she holding back? All in all, if your characters are a flop, your movie probably will be too. Epic fail. To recap, it's kind of no wonder this loud, violent, romance-free movie with poorly written characters bombed on Mother's Day weekend. It was beaten by the female-centric mother and daughter comedy Snatched, as well as the box office invincibility of Marvel and its Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2. Warner Brothers clearly overestimated moviegoers' hunger for this kind of entertainment, overlooking a major side effect of today's binge-watching culture. When it doesn't leave you satisfied, it leaves you stuffed, and paying 20 bucks at the box office for another bloated epic doesn't spell relief. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.